Miss Mor le David Adonai roi lo yachsar Pinotesh yar bitzeni Al mei menuchot yenahaleni Nafshi yeshovev Yancheni vemaglei tzedek Leman shemo Gam ki eilech begei tzalmavet לא ירא רע, כי אתה עמדי. שבטך ומשענתך, המה ינחמוני, תערוך לפני שולחן, נהגת צוררי. תשנת בשם ראשי, כוסי רוויה. אך טוב וחסד ירדפוני כל ימי חיי, ושבתי בבית אדוני לאורך ימים. As Kaner Shifim began with the words of Psalm 23 in the Hebrew, please join with me in the words of Psalm 23 in the English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my foes. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yishem, Adonai Mebarach. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're gathered here today to express our deep abiding love, our honor and respect, and to say goodbye to our precious Ethel Sadalka, who was taken from us this week. Ethel was a devoted and loving wife, mother, grandmother and friend who leaves behind a legacy of great love and cherished values. Her passing leaves a great void. But we find comfort and strength in memories of time shared and the gifts that she leaves behind. And so we come together to draw strength from each other as we share in those memories and honor her. And two members of the family are going to speak about Ethel. I'd like to call first upon Ed and then Jonah. Thank you, Rabbi. First of all, on behalf of the family, I wish to thank each of you for being with us today. And thank you for your love and support when my mother-in-law was sick. Ethel Sadolka was raised in Zamos, a beautiful town in southeastern Poland, which in 1992 was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List. When Ethel was 9 or 10 years old in 1939, with the outbreak of World War II, she fled Zamos with her parents to escape the Nazis. Her father died from an infectious disease, and she spent the war years with her mother, aunt, uncle, and a cousin in various places, including Siberia and Ash Kyrgyzstan. She lived in awful conditions and survived only because of her inner strength and because she and her mother, Brana, protected each other throughout the horrific ordeal of the Holocaust. After the war, Ethel and Brana went to a few displaced persons camps. The last camp was located in Ferenwald, Germany. It was there that Ethel and Brana charted their new life. The two of them were very close and devoted to each other. However, they had a difference of opinion regarding their next steps. 
Ethel was a beautiful 20-year-old idealist who enjoyed her participation in the Zionist youth movement. She wanted to settle in Israel. Her mother, however, was tired from their torturous fight for their lives during the war and was lured by the opportunity for comfort and an easier life in the United States. While Ethel and Brana debated their next steps and waited for opportunities to leave Germany, the beginning of a made-for-Hollywood love story unfolded. Let's set the scene. Ethel is in a classroom in Fahrenwald. Sam Sadolka, a dashing and very bright medical student working in the camp, walked past the classroom and spotted Ethel through the window. He became mesmerized by the beauty of this young kid, as he later called her. He somehow arranged to meet her, and they quickly fell in love. Like Ethel, Sam was a Zionist and wanted to live in Israel, where his four siblings had settled before, during, and after the war. But Ethel and her mother took advantage of an opportunity to immigrate to the United States to join cousins. Mm -hmm. We often hear wonderful stories about how immigrants came to this country with nothing and then built wonderful lives. I do not wish to emphasize the fact that Ethel came to America with empty pockets because she actually brought with her something far more valuable than a bag of gold coins. She entered the country with love in her heart, which would serve as the nucleus for a wonderful and meaningful life in America. In fact, even though Ethel left Sam behind in Germany with his medical books, the two lovebirds corresponded while Sam completed his studies and Ethel worked factory jobs in New York. Separated by a wide ocean, their love only grew stronger. Finally, Sam was able to settle in New York and marry his beloved Ethel. The two of them, along with Brana and their daughter Rita, moved to Ohio, where Sam had opportunities to practice medicine. In Cleveland, Michelle, my beloved wife, was born. Sam and Ethel gave their two daughters wonderful opportunities, which enabled them to become an educated and worldly young women. The Sadolka household was traditional for the time period. Sam was the provider as he worked long hours as a physician, while Ethel was the homemaker. She made sure that her daughters were always nourished and otherwise in the best position possible to excel in school, which they did on many levels. Sam and Ethel not only emphasized education, but they also demonstrated by their own actions the importance of celebrating Shabbat and all other Jewish customs and holidays that the Nazis had attempted to seize and destroy. Ethel always worked very hard to set a beautiful holiday table with delicious food. She had the reputation among her daughter's friends as a creative and excellent cook. Sam and Ethel also demonstrated to their children the importance of family togetherness as they included Brana in their household and took their daughters on wonderful family vacations. Sam and Ethel cherished the concept of family because they had lost family members during the Nazi regime. Michelle and Reed obviously got the message as they both moved back to Cleveland on the same day in 1989. They built their families under the watchful eyes of their parents. Ethel was delighted with her opportunity to become a big part of the lives of her six grandchildren as she babysat for them, fed them, encouraged them to wear jackets and to always dress warmly and got to know their friends. She enjoyed attending their concerts, plays and sporting events. She was their biggest fan. Even though Ethel and Sam followed the lead of Brana and settled in the United States rather than Israel, they never stopped being Zionists. They frequently visited Israel. Ethel loved being part of Sam's large Israeli family. During the last few days, <coughs> we have heard from many Israeli cousins who have shared their fond memories of spending time with Ethel in both Israel and in Cleveland. When I first began courting Michelle, I was invited to a Shabbat dinner with her parents. The dinner was prepared by Ethel and included challah, Israeli salad, canidal and chicken soup, potatoes, cooked carrots, kasha with bow tie pasta, baked chicken, compote, and delicious trudel. I was immediately impressed by Ethel's outstanding culinary talents and over the years have tried with limited success to emulate some of her special recipes. On that first Shabbat together, I did not only note that she was a great cook, but was also struck by her graciousness, sense of humor, frankness, and quiet charm. She did not need to speak a lot to impress me. 
perhaps because it was Erev Shabbat, the time when we traditionally chant the song known as Eshet Hayil, or the Woman of Valor, it struck me then, and has resonated with me for the 33 years that I've known Ethel, that she is indeed a woman of valor. As stated directly in the song, which is taken from the book of Proverbs, a woman of valor is a woman who makes a house a home, a woman who is like the trading ships bringing food from afar. The beautiful song also states that the woman of valor gets up while it is still night to provide food for her household. This characterization of a woman of valor fits Ethel Sedolka exactly. Even during the later stages of her life, she would wake up early, particularly on Shabbat, to prepare breakfast for Sam. Ethel was a kind and giving person. She always provided her mother, her husband, her daughters, and her grandchildren nourishment for their bodies, nourishment for their minds, and nourishment for their souls. Performing these important tasks embodied her essence. She was only interested in playing this role. I believe strongly that, with her excellent memory and command of facts and statistics, she could have excelled in many professional careers, such as accounting, actuary, science, or litigation. But she never saw the need to expand her work beyond the household because she appreciated the importance of her role as the caregiver and homemaker. I wish to give my mother-in-law, Ethel Sadolka, the highest praise as a woman of valor and thank her for sustaining me and the rest of our family in so many important ways. Ethel, we appreciate all the nourishment, love, and support that you provided your family throughout your lifetime, and thank you for your dedication to these important goals. You are an excellent role model. You are a woman of valor. We love you and will cherish your memory forever. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Jonah Weinstein and I am one of Grandma Ethel's six grandchildren. My grandma was loyal, gentle, she was friendly, and she always had food to offer. She came to every event growing up, musical concerts, sporting events, graduation ceremonies, performances, VIP day. She called our house and my cousin's house every day just to make sure that everyone was okay. The home was her domain. She always wanted to know when we were coming home, when we were away. My grandma was so proud of her children and grandchildren and all of their accomplishments and loved quelling over her shine kindelach, Yiddish for beautiful children. My grandma provided for everyone. Like my dad said, she cooked up plates of delicious food for Shabbat and Jewish holidays, matzah ball soup, chicken, latkes, kompot, strudel. You could taste the love in every bite. I'd sit in her kitchen and watch her peel an apple in one long curly piece. She was very talented. If you'd ever ask her for a recipe, she'd say, oh, you know, a little salt, a little onion, potatoes. You had to watch. She'd always beg us to take food home. We all loved spending time with her, and she made sure that we played safely, even when we were jumping on the beds. Not only was she loyal to her family, she was loyal to her brands. She bought the same Neapolitan ice cream, pretzels, frosted mini wheats, salami sticks, and pickles waiting to be doled out. Her fridge was always stocked, waiting for her children and grandchildren. My grandma was an active listener and had an incredible memory. In her own quiet way, she absorbed everything and served as the family historian, recalling birth years, spouses' names, professions, and whereabouts of relatives. She was not a woman of many words, but when she spoke, everyone listened. My grandma was sharp. She knew how to take care of all needs, and when she laughed, she lit up the room. She had a beautiful smile and an infectious laugh. Behind her smile was wisdom. My grandmother had experienced so much hardship as a child and young adult, surviving the Holocaust, and eventually starting a life in a foreign land. But my grandma was strong and so resilient. She never complained about anything. She merely went about her business and moved forward. She never spoke about her past unless you asked in a very, very specific way. She knew what it meant to be nomadic and a refugee and made her home a stable and comforting place who all, for all who entered. 
While Grandpa completed his education in Germany, my grandma came to the U.S. with her mother and a few cousins who survived the war. Grandma learned English and became an American citizen. When my grandpa completed his education, they raised their family in a neighborhood that could provide my Aunt Rita and Mom Michelle with a supportive and thriving Jewish community. To all of us, she passed on a commitment to Judaism and Jewish culture and the, port and the importance of a Jewish community. She cared so much about everyone's well-being. Even in the hottest of Cleveland summer days, she would demand her children and grandchildren to put on a jacket, long stockings, and would always offer her own or my grandpa's clothes. She was selfless and the ultimate nurturer. In her apartment at Myers, the residents and staff all refer to her as Mama because she was like a mother to everyone she interacted with. She put everyone else first, and never bought lavish things for herself, ever. This summer, my brother Gabriel and I had the opportunity to travel to Poland and Ukraine to research and investigate our maternal family's roots. One night, we met a young Jewish guy who invited us back to his apartment to continue chatting and have a tea. On his stove sat a pot of kasha, or bulgur wheat, exactly the same kind that my grandma would make for us growing up. I asked our new friend if I could take a picture. He said, crazy Americans <laughs> taking pictures of a kasha. But for me and my brother, our immediate association of this kasha was my grandma. Additionally, we also had the opportunity to visit my grandma's hometown. She scoured the documents that we brought home from the archives, looking at the scripted names of her parents and relatives who shared a section in the census report. She smiled and laughed. She asked me about the town and what it had become. How many Jews were there now? How many people? And in perfect Polish, she read all the documents. My grandmother was not someone who sat around and gave advice. She lived and you watched. She led by example. She encouraged and supported her daughters and grandchildren to follow their dreams and live life, meanwhile always demonstrating the importance of the central family unit. I had the honor of spending my grandparents 62nd wedding anniversary with them this July. When someone asked them what was the secret to a long marriage, my grandpa said, we have everything in common and we never fight. My grandma loved my grandpa, her friends, and her family so much, and we all love her and will miss her. She and my grandfather were there to take care of us, feed us, love us, and they both have significantly shaped the person I am today. I will always be indebted to her for that. This weekend I lost my grandma and I lost a friend. Thank you. And then shown us such beautiful words. And you painted such a, a truly magnificent and complete portrait of Michelle's mother, Jonah, of your mother, and your mother-in-law. And uh, we could relate to all the words that you spoke because uh, they reflected all the qualities that we've all seen in her that make her so very special. The rabbis teach that words which come from the heart penetrate the heart, and your words certainly penetrate our hearts and move us deeply today. Ethel Sadalka, Edel Miriam, Bat David Brana. was very devoted to her family. A loving sister to Aaron of blessed memory and to Sam's siblings, to Nisan and Chana. Chana Lihibadel, she should live and be well. Nisan of blessed memory. To Fanya and Shimon and Mitya, all of blessed memory. Yaakov and Miriam of blessed memory and Sheik, Sheikha and Sila of blessed memory. Ethel was a loving and devoted wife to you, Sam, who loved you with her whole being, looked after you and cared for you as you looked after her. In the 62 years of marriage you joined together and years before that, since that famous date on which you saw her through that window. Ethel was a loving mother to you, Rita and Mark, and to you, Michelle and Ed, devoted and caring and proud. And Matthew, Alyssa, and Daniel, Noah, Anna, Gabe, and Jonah, you're all the jewels in her crown, who she loves so deeply. 
All of you loved her in life, and now are left to revere her memory in death. And we pray that memory always brings comfort. Ethel had a very difficult life in those early years that I described so vividly. Fleeing from the Nazis, from city to city, from country to country, living as a refugee, always in flight, living hand to mouth, always at the mercy of others, under extremely harsh and difficult conditions, it's hard for us to imagine what that must have been like. Jonas spoke about visiting Zamosh, and what an extraordinary gift that you and Gabe were able to go there and connect so personally with family history and then to bring that back and share it with Ethel and with Sam. Zamosh was, as Ed said, a very sophisticated European town. And Ethel came from a good family with a simple upbringing. Her father was a craftsman and upholsterer. Her mother was a seamstress. And in those years before the war, Ethel went to public school with both Jewish and non-Jewish children, prayed with them in the morning, not Jewish prayer, but that's what the school did, so she was there, and played with the non-Jewish children who were her friends. She even had a dog. Such a normal upbringing, such a good life, and then to have that all ripped away and have your life turned upside down and turned into chaos and suffering and wandering and wondering and not knowing what the future would bring. And she lived with that chaos and torment until she came to America when she was some 21 years old. It is difficult for us to imagine the ordeals she and Sam faced, the trauma and scars of their experiences. And yet, they came here to America, and they built here in America for themselves, in Cleveland in particular, such an extraordinary life. A life that was filled with stability and security and joy and love and friendship and companionship and all the blessings they could seek. None of that erases the difficult years. But it is healing to have had family surround her and Sam. You are all a gift to them. You give them what they craved most. Have a life filled with love. Sam, you and Ethel shared a very special, intimate, loving relationship. She was not only your wife, but also your best friend. She was, in your words, a nice woman, a gentle lady, a good wife and mother, and so beautiful. The two of you shared a traditional household. You provided financially for the family through your work, and looked after Ethel's every need. And she kept the home and looked after the children lovingly. You made sure she never had to write a check or pay a bill. And she took care of you, right down to those breakfasts that Ed spoke about. She was, as you already heard, an excellent cook. And her food brought many special memories of her love. Michelle, you shared how one of your friends loved to come over to your house and open the fridge and go through all those magical pots because they had never had those European dishes, those delicacies that your mother specialized in and that she served every Shabbat and every holiday with all the family gathered around for years doing it all without any help, all by herself the compote and the kasha and marnishkas, the chicken soup with knedelach, and the best lakas ever. Ethel never drove a car. She loved to walk. She would walk to the deli, to the bakery, to Heinen's, to the library. She would walk to the corner to get a cup of coffee and to talk. 
She also loved to sing. She had a beautiful singing voice, and I'm told that she also loved to sing in the bath. Edelweiss was her favorite. She loved Broadway tunes and Rogers and Hamilton. She loved to read, and she kept up with the news and current events, and she especially loved keeping up with celebrity news. Princess Diana, Jackie Kennedy. She was smart, really smart. She spoke five languages fluently, and she liked to study Hebrew. She helped each of you with your homework when you were young, and she read to you, and she was so proud of you. And she and Sam were very, very active in the Holocaust survivors community here in town, which became the center of their lives, the group upon which their friends and social circles were built. They worked together to address survivor issues in the community, to remember together and to draw strength from each other, and to find friendship in each other. And the bonds between them all were very strong. And largely for that reason, when Ethel is laid to rest today, it will be at Zion Cemetery, where she'll be near the monument that is in memory of those who perished in the Holocaust and in honor of the survivors. Ethel was an old-fashioned mother. She took care of all your needs and did everything for you. And you share with me, I find it hard to believe, it certainly wasn't true in my house, that you never had to do any chores. She did everything. In the early years of school, you would come home for lunch and she would serve you a hot lunch as you would watch television. Michelle and Rita, there are a few years between the two of you, so you weren't home at the same time, different times. So, Rita, you watched Dick Van Dyke and Michelle, you watched Bewitched. And then, as you got older and lunch was at school, your mom would pack your lunch for you, salami sandwich with chips, a Hershey bar with almonds, and an orange. And she would ask you all about what you learned that day, make you tell her everything that happened at school. She did the same also with Hebrew school. And she would come with you to junior congregation so she could fell, and so she could also show you how important it was to be there because she chose to be with you by your side. She didn't drop you off. She let you know that it was equally important to her. She set an example for you, as Jonah said, by the way that she lived, so you knew what was important in life and what she wanted from you. She was always interested in your friends, and your friends always loved your mom as well. And she remembered all their names, as she did the grandchildren's friends' names, because she had a memory that was like a trap. And she would always ask about them. Sometimes a long period of time would pass, and she would still say to one of the grandchildren, How's so-and-so? She remembered them. And she took care of you all so carefully, and you sometimes drove her a little bit crazy. I read her like when you described hanging upside down from the jungle gym across the street. She would come out to get you for dinner time and see you hanging there. But as the years went by and the two of you grew up, Rita and Michelle, you became a great help to your mother, looking after her needs the way that she had looked after yours, driving her places, spending time with her, talking with her, supporting her. She would call you each every day at the same time. Whether it was a convenient time or not, whether you were awake or not, read it whether you were working all night before or not, didn't matter. Always making sure you were warm as you heard and had a jacket, that you had food to eat, that you would take food home. Always worried about you. There are so many wonderful memories that you share together, especially the grandchildren sleepovers with all the cousins at the house, staying up late and then waking up to challah French toast for breakfast, how she would babysit for you, how she would be with you when you came home from school, all those Shabbat and holiday dinners, how she came to all of your events, not just her daughters, but her grandchildren, the love and support that she gave, 
also to your husbands who were not sons in law but were rather sons in love cherished Mark and Ed both as her own family she was a straight shooter she would be very honest with you in a helpful way but she always let you know exactly what she thought and then you shared that she was particularly honest with you about your cooking don't don't remember what it was that you had made but I remember you had said that she critiqued it and then the, the critique made it better and when it was better she let you know that too because she was never short on praise always wanted to support and encourage and empower each of you there are memories of family vacations trips to Israel Michelle when they came to visit you in Colorado and went hiking outside their comfort zone trips to London and Paris and family trips all across the country and that bar and bat mitzvah of Matthew and Anna on Masada that was mentioned already when it was 104 degrees and she wore a sweatshirt <laughs> because it's always cold and she would say when you walked up, not hello, but you don't have a jacket? That's right. And all those wonderful family gatherings at Chautauqua and the Catskills. Many precious times together, times away together, times at home together, times in which she shared her concern and her humor and her warmth and her love and her caring for each of you, making each one of you feel special. Ethel was loving and steady and compassionate. She was deeply loyal and caring, selfless, gentle, and kind. She had a great smile and a great sense of humor and a wonderful laugh, and she was the ultimate nurturer. It's hard to imagine she has gone from us now, but she leaves behind an extraordinary legacy that will live on always with you. And you describe that legacy to me, and we all see it, and know it also when we look at your family. A legacy that includes a commitment to honoring Jewish traditions, and in particular Ashkenazic Eastern European Jewish traditions, to taking care of family, always making sure family is taken care of and their needs are met and that they're elevated, and perseverance in times of difficulty knowing what it means to push through even the darkest and the hardest of times to rise up over the greatest of challenges and to build. And that's what Ethel did. She built an extraordinary life. And she built an extraordinary family. Your Rosh Chodesh passed not too long ago. We're just getting into the month of Elul. And uh, the rabbis say the reason Rosh Chodesh is such an important holiday for us is because Yisrael nim shalat la that Israel is to be compared to the moon. The moon starts out full, bright like the sun, a solid disk. And then over a period of two weeks, that moon begins to wane and grow smaller and smaller and smaller until that moon seems to disappear. And we might think that moon is gone forever, but then, right away, a small sliver of light appears. And that sliver grows larger and larger until the moon is full again, until it waxes and fills the whole sky with light. And the rabbi said, that's just like the Jewish people. We face times of persecution and difficulty and challenge, times when it seems like our light will be extinguished, like we are waning and we will be no more. Times like the Holocaust that your parents endured. But God says then, when it seems least possible, when it seems the light is almost gone, suddenly that light begins to grow, brighter and larger until it fills the sky. The Jewish people grow. We increase and fill the world with God's light. That's the miracle of the Jewish people. Despite the darkness of the Holocaust, we are still here. We are still here not just alive, not just surviving, but thriving. Thriving 
contributing God's light to the world around us, making it a better place, repairing it, healing it, bringing it closer to redemption. A force that impacts life in our communities and the world around us for good, for holiness, for healing. And in the same way, despite all of the darkness that Ethel went through and Sam, despite the loss of much family, which can never be replaced and is extraordinarily tragic and painful. In the end, Sam, you, and Ethel together, you built an extraordinary life. You pushed you until that light shines brightly again. And that light shines through each of you, their children, through Rita and Mark and through Michelle and Ed and through their grandchildren, Look what a beautiful family. Look how many of you there are. Look at the goodness and the kindness and the love and the Torah that you bring into the world. Like the moon waxing full. That's the greatest legacy of all. May Ethel's memory always be for a blessing. And we say together, Amen. Please rise now for the memorial prayer. Okay. It's... Um, El Beganet den Tehemenuchatam Ahanam Balarachamim Astire habesedek nafech leolamim Utseror bitseror achayim et nishmatam Adonai unachalatam Betanuach b'shalom Al mishkava Benomar Amen Exalted, compassionate God we pray that you grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of our beloved Ethel who has gone to her eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that she find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. May the Lord be her portion. May she rest in peace. And we say it together. Amen. Amen. Interment will follow at Zion Cemetery after which the family will return to the home of uh, Ed and Michelle at 33 Lyman Circle in Shaker Heights. And we will hold services there upon returning and also this evening at 7 p.m. Tomorrow there will be Shiva 2 to 5 p.m. at R.H. Meyer's Apartments in the Arts and Crafts Room on the first floor. And then Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, uh, Shiva will be back at the Weinstein home, uh, 2 to 5 and 7 to 9 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday, 2 to 5 p.m. on Friday. And Tuesday night also, after, after the time at Myers. So 2 to 5 at Myers, 7 to 9 at the house on Tuesday night. Okay. Contributions may be made to Grosch Day School and to United States Holocaust Memorial Museum.